The F-104 Starfighter was a high-speed interceptor designed in the late 1950s and saw service with many nations right up until the 21st century. Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome to my build and review of the F-104G Starfighter in 170 second scale from Academy. This is actually a build video that you guys voted for, so after a little while in edit, it is finally here. If you'd like the opportunity to pick some videos which might come in the future, make sure you're subscribed and keep an eye on my community posts. Anyways, about this build, I'll put a list of products I used on the screen now to give you an idea of the kind of things that I used during the build of this model. And as this is a build video, I will be primarily focusing on how the model goes together and what it looks like at the end. If you'd like a more in-depth look inside the box and see what's included in the kit, please take a look at the dedicated unboxing video I made on that topic. But anyways, without any further ado, I think it's time to get into this one. So starting off this build, I decided to use my snips to remove the parts that I needed from the sprue. Once I'd done that, any rough areas or excess bits of flash could be removed using a sanding stick or a sharp knife. I'm using Humbrol Liquid Poly here. This thin cement will flow into the, some of the gaps and create a good bond. It's not the thinnest product out there, but it works all right. To start off with, I'm assembling the two halves for the fuel tanks which go onto the underside of the aircraft. This is a simple matter to find the locating marks and then join them together. But you do need to make sure that you put them the right way around. When you've done that, you should have four of them, two that go underneath the plane and two that go onto the end of the wings. And with that, I think it's time to move on to the next step. I cemented the cockpit component inside one of the fuselage halves. And then I added the nose wheel landing gear leg into its little hole. There is a back plate component which gets glued onto the outside of the fuselage at the air intakes. Once this is in place, you can then add the air intake cowling over the top. Make sure you get these the right way around though, because if they're wrong, they just won't look right. But once I'd figured it out and I'd done it on both sides of the aircraft, it was time to move on. These parts are air brakes, which can be glued in an open or closed position on the side of the fuselage. Why they come as separate parts and give you this option, I'm not entirely sure. If you glue them in in the open position, there will simply be a massive hole on the inside of the model as there's no internal detail. So for that reason, I decided to glue mine in the closed position. I have a bit of a habit of forgetting to add nose weight in my model aircraft, so this time, to make sure that I didn't forget, I got some pink tack and just stuck it in as far as it would go forwards of the main landing gear in the fuselage halves. Hopefully this will be enough. You won't be able to see the pink tack after this model is built though, because I'm going to spray most of it with uh, 151 spray primer. This is just a cheap can of spray primer, which was applied in a couple of thin coats to get a nice even finish and form a base layer for the next layers of paint. Now let's take a look at the pilot figure and I'm not even sure what this one is. So comparing it to another pilot figure, which I have in the stash, you can see that the one included in the kit is incredibly under scale. So although the one I've got isn't for a jet aircraft pilot, I'm going to use this bigger one, because let's face it, it's just simply a better model. I used Tamiya XF15 flat flesh acrylic straight out of the pot on his face. Next I used Vallejo red and yellow acrylics, probably a little bit more yellow to red because red is quite a vibrant colour, and created an orange colour. Looking at period photos from the time, it seemed to me that they wore orange flight suits, so this seemed appropriate for this figure. Vallejo matte white acrylic was then used to paint his flying helmet. Vallejo camouflage olive green matte acrylic was then carefully painted onto his face mask and the associated breathing tubes. And then, when those paints were pretty much dry, some umber wash was used to bring out those recessed details. And then I try to put him inside the plane, but sadly, as you can see, he doesn't quite fit. I kind of anticipated this, so I never bothered painting his boots, because let's face it, the poor guy was going to lose his feet. 
and with a little application of some more humble poly cement, finally he manages to fit inside the plane. And it's not a bad fit actually. And now finally I can join the two fuselage halves together. I ran some glue around the edges and then found their little locating marks and held the two halves together. Some very fine sanding paper was then used to smooth out the joins between the two halves and make it look as though it was sort of one piece. Vallejo matte black was then thinned with a little Tamiya X28 acrylic thinner. This will help the paint flow a bit better and avoid leaving brush strokes. I used this on the cockpit surround area and a couple of thin layers were needed to get a nice even finish. Now I can add those stubby little wings into their slots in the side of the fuselage halves. These two wings are meant to point downwards, that's to say they have a bit of anhedral and I found them a little bit loose so sort of had to hold them in place until they dried at the correct angle. It was a little bit fiddly and it took a while for the glue to cure and ensure they were in the right place. The horizontal tail surface could then be glued into its position at the top of the tail. Then the landing gear legs for the main gear could be added into their hole in the landing gear bay in the belly of the aircraft. This was a little bit fiddly though and it sort of goes against reasoning in the sense that you sort of have to glue it in and pull it up at the same time but anyway you can get there in the end. This was then followed by the partition piece which goes down the center line of the aircraft in the landing gear bay. Again you have to install it and then pull it towards you to make sure it stays there. Next, the pylons under the wings could be glued into their mounting holes. There's also a couple of rails for the missiles which go on the fuselage. The arrestor hook for those high speed landings gets glued in here. I then added the landing gear doors for the nose wheel and then also the ones for the main gear bays. I masked the cockpit canopy off screen because it was just too fiddly to do it with the camera in the way but I used my normal procedure of sticking on some masking tape and then cutting it to size of a knife. Humbrol clear fix was then applied to the cockpit canopy using a cocktail stick. I run a small amount around the edges where it's going to come into contact with the fuselage and then carefully pressed it into place and cleaned up any of the excess glue. That cheap spray primer from earlier makes a reappearance here and I applied it to the entire model as a base coat, including some of the parts which are still yet to be added on. Next up, this Hobbycraft white acrylic spray paint was used to paint some of the parts which should be white, such as the missiles. The fuel tanks though, it's going to be a base layer for the next colour. According to the paint scheme, part of the nose should also be white, so this received a few coats as well. The Vallejo red and yellow from earlier is going to make a reappearance now. I'm going to mix them to make a sort of day glow orange kind of colour and thin it down with some acrylic thinner just to make sure it will go through my airbrush nice and smoothly. It was then given quite a few coats to the centre section of those fuel tanks which are going to go on the wing tips of the model. After a few coats of this paint, I'm actually impressed with how well it looks. It's come out quite vibrant and it's got a nice smooth finish. I masked the nose of the model because I need to apply a black paint to this now. This cheap auto spray paint was what I chose to use and it will go on the top there, sort of as an anti-glare panel on the front of the model. Tamiya XF20 medium grey acrylic was then thinned with a little Tamiya X28 acrylic thinner until it had the right consistency to go through my airbrush. I then used this on the lower areas of the model. I have of course already masked off those white and black areas on the nose so that I don't get any paint there inadvertently. A few thin coats of this paint was needed all over the lower side of the model ensuring I got it into those awkward places around the wheel wells and missile pylons. I made sure to mask those orange areas on the wingtip tanks that I did earlier and then the wheels and those tanks got a good coating of this spray as well. The next paint I chose to use was this Vallejo Model Air Grey which I didn't bother thinning as it comes ready to go in the bottle. This was used as the blue grey sort of top colour for the camouflage scheme and I have already masked off the lower areas. 
Up next was this Vallejo US Forest Green. This will be the green colour for my camouflage scheme. The first parts that I applied it to were the drop tanks and the wingtip tanks. When that was dry, I removed the masking tape that I had applied to the wingtip tanks to reveal that beautiful dayglow orange. I'm not going to lie, the hardest part of this build so far was the camouflage scheme. Not the painting of it, but the masking of it. It was quite complicated and presented quite a few headaches, probably taking me about an hour to get all of that masking tape on. But when it was all on, I was able to apply the green to the correct areas, and then finally, after a couple of coats, it was time to remove the masking tape. And to be honest, I'm actually really impressed with how this came out. From my recollection, there wasn't much in the way of paint bleed, and what there was, I could easily fix with a little bit of paint later on. I would like to get some new masking tape though, as the masking tape I've got doesn't have the straightest of edges and is a little bit fuzzy. But to be honest, it's not too bad. Next, I'm going to use some Humbrol Precision Poly Cement to glue those wing tip tanks into place on the ends of the wings. I had to take quite a bit of care here to make sure that I didn't get the glue in the wrong places and spoil that lovely paint finish that I've managed to achieve. And when that glue was dry, I thinned some gloss varnish down with water and put it through my airbrush to give a nice even glossy finish to the entire model. This will form a basis for the decals in a minute. Having cut the decal sheet into more manageable pieces, the decals were soaked in some warm water until they started to release from the backing paper. I then put them to the side on some paper towel to blot away the excess water. I'm going to use Humbrol Decal Fix in this build as my setting solution. It's a little bit more aggressive than some of the other ones I have in my modeling supply and I find that Academy decals tend to be a bit thick and papery, so I'm hoping this extra aggressiveness of the solution will help soften them down into the surface details a lot more and prevent silvering. The decals were on the whole okay to apply to the model, not being too difficult. There are some larger ones which take a little bit of care and some smaller ones which you might end up losing or folding over on themselves but on the whole, they're not too bad to do. A little trick I learned though, was that using some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement very gently over the top of your decal will help to melt them down into the surface of plastic. I only use this on the Academy transfers because I find them so thick and difficult to conform to surfaces that a little bit of extra melting as it is actually helps it go quite well. It's not a perfect solution and I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this to better quality transfers as you do run the risk of melting them and this could end up ruining the entire finish of the model. So this is a risky step. The Vallejo black acrylic makes a reappearance here and I used this paint on the air intake cones and the trim around the outside of the intakes on the side of the fuselage. I also applied it to the tyres on the wheels as well as the seekers on the air-to-air -air missiles. This Vallejo aluminium paint was then loaded into my airbrush and it was used to paint the probe which goes onto the nose of the model and the engine exhaust which goes at the back. Vallejo gunmetal grey was then thinned down with some Tamiya X28 acrylic thinner and then loaded into the airbrush as well. This was then applied to the engine exhaust nozzle to make it a bit more burnt and a bit more weathered than just having it as an aluminium finish. Next up, this matte varnish was thinned with some water and then loaded into the airbrush. The entire model was then given a couple of layers of this paint in order to dull down that shine and protect the transfers. Here, I'm going to use these black and brown cheap oil paints thinned down with some white spirit. This is going to create a nice oil wash which I'll put into the recessed details such as the panel lines and the rivets. Sadly this kit doesn't have particularly deep moulded detail but I'm hoping that a little bit of uh, weathering is better than nothing at all. 
Any excess oil wash could then be removed by a cotton bud dipped in white spirit, working in the direction of airflow to simulate streaks of oil and the like. The wheels received a bit of this wash to bring out their recessed details, and the engine exhaust also had a good covering of this to further enhance the details that were on that part. The engine exhaust nozzle could then be carefully glued into the tailpipe of the model. A little bit more poly cement was applied to the pylons underneath the wings and then the drop tanks added there. The main gear wheels were then added onto their legs. Not forgetting of course that the nose wheel needed to be added too. The air to air missiles could then be glued onto their pylons underneath the model. And the final part to add was the probe on the nose. All that's left to do now is to carefully peel back all that masking tape on the cockpit canopy. And that's it. My build of the Academy F-104G Starfighter in 170 second scale is now complete. So what did I think of this model? On the whole, it's not too difficult to assemble. The most difficult part for me was getting that masking done ready for the paint scheme. I found that to be quite fiddly and time consuming, but on the whole, I think that the paint scheme came out quite well. I'm not entirely sure that all of the colors are completely accurate as per the instructions, but I did my best with what I had. I think it's worth mentioning as well that the instructions come in black and white and they aren't exactly the easiest to follow. The diagrams are a little bit cluttered and the black and white painting instructions are a little vague, so you're pretty much guessing at what you're doing half the time. It's also worth mentioning that the box art and the illustrations of the model on the box are not the kit that you get inside. It's the same F-104G Starfighter, it just has a different paint scheme. So if you really wanted the one that was on the box, I'm afraid you're probably not going to have that one, but this seems to be quite a common trend of Academy kits that I have bought in the past. The kit inside doesn't always match, and whilst they do put a little bit of a disclaimer on there, it can be a little bit disappointing seeing as they haven't really bothered to tell you what you're going to get. The kit that I have here is probably only about two years old, being released around 2019 or 2020. However, the tooling for the model dates back to 1985, and I think it's quite evident that the quality of the parts and also the design of the kit is sort of in line with that time period. There are recessed details, but they're very shallow, and there isn't much in the way of internal detail which on such a large aircraft in 170 second scale, you'd expect to see something inside the landing gear bays, the cockpit, and even around those air brake areas where you can position them open, but what's the point if it's just going to be a black hole inside? And speaking of the cockpit area, that pilot was an absolute joke. I'm not sure what they used as a model to create that pilot to start off with, but it's completely under scale and doesn't look realistic at all. On the whole though, the parts went together reasonably well, and the fit at times was a little bit loose. But there wasn't that much flash, and that was quite a good thing. I feel as though I've managed to improve a little bit with my painting on this one, and it is a bit of a shame that my oil wash isn't really visible due to the very shallow panel lines. On the whole though, I'm pretty happy with my results. Not sure I'd build this model again, I'm pretty sure there are other F-104s available out there from other manufacturers that are probably more recent toolings. But if you really wanted to get one of these, what would it cost you at the moment? So a quick look online tells me that you'll be looking between seven to 10 pounds for this kit. And as you can see, a couple of years ago, I paid six pounds 75, which is slightly under the RRP at the moment. But in my opinion, I'm not sure it's really worth that amount of money. I feel that due to the points I've previously raised, such as the underscale uh, pilot, the lack of detail, and also something I haven't yet mentioned, but those decals being incredibly thick, and despite my little trick with uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, they still left quite considerable amount of silvering. So bearing all those points in mind, I'd probably be more content paying about five pounds for this one. And with that, I think it's probably time to end this one here. So what do you think of my build and do you agree with me that it's probably a little bit more expensive for what it's really worth? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. 
Please remember that if you'd like to take the opportunity to vote on any of my community polls or even just be notified of any future releases, click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a modeling upload. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to help other people with similar interests see this one, please click that like button. It means a lot. A quick shout out to my patrons and channel members on screen now for the generous support they give my channel. They help support the channel by letting me get all of those consumables such as the paints and other products that I use during my builds. So a massive thanks to these guys. If you'd like to find out more about what becoming a patron or channel member means, take a look at the links in the description. Finally, I think the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.